day goes by that you won't find Patricia Prattis Jennings practicing on the piano. It's a routine she started years ago and continues. Even though she retired from the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra back in 2006. I try to practice every day because I never know when I'm going to be asked to do some sort of a little gig. I think that when you have a talent, you shouldn't let it just die completely. I don't have arthritis in my fingers, so as long as my fingers are willing to do it, I think I should honor them by using them. Those nimble fingers, along with extraordinary talent and skill, helped her maintain her position as principal keyboardist with the PSO for more than 42 years, an accomplishment in of itself. But it seems from the start, Jennings was destined to make history. In 1964, she became the first African-American woman to be awarded a full contract by a major U.S. orchestra. Do you miss it? There are things about being in the orchestra that, that I definitely miss. It's an experience like no other. And I don't think we appreciate these things until they no longer exist. It's in retrospect that you appreciate what it was like. What it was like was exciting and challenging a job where she got to work with many famous musicians and singers. And there were many opportunities to travel across the globe, but it was a demanding profession requiring strict discipline and dedication. One does not do these things without working very, very hard, spending many, many, many hours at the piano learning concertos, learning piano reductions, where the, the orchestra part is reduced so that the piano can play it. Because I had to do much of that when soloists would come to town. I, I wasn't always happy about having to do that because I felt that it was taking time away from music that I would be performing as the featured person. Performing is something Jennings has always enjoyed. She began to play at age five, after her parents bought a piano. And I started taking piano lessons, and I must have progressed fairly well, because by the age of seven, I was playing for teas at Wesley Center AME Zion Church, and I can remember sitting at that piano playing, thinking, this is what I want to do with my life. I was going to be a musician. This love of music led her to soon take up another instrument, the violin. So I began to take violin lessons and quickly became a member of the Lemington School Orchestra. By the age of 12, I decided that two instruments was one too many to concentrate on. So I stopped taking violin lessons, but I didn't stop playing the violin. But I played in the All City Orchestra of the Pittsburgh Youth Symphony. I played in the Westinghouse High School Orchestra. But the piano would prove to be her first and last love. At the tender age of 14, she made her debut with the Pittsburgh Symphony. There used to be something called the Pittsburgh Symphony Junior in which high school students sat chair for chair with the members of the big orchestra. But then in 1956, I was invited to be the piano soloist. It gives you an idea that the Pittsburgh Symphony was rather progressive. It's only in looking back that I understand how proud Pittsburghers must have been to have this little African-American girl in her blue satin dress on the stage. Jennings' musical ability so impressed symphony members that they eventually hired her. In 1964, I was hired by Dr. William Steinberg, who was for many years the music director of the Pittsburgh Symphony. But the next conductor was Andre Previn. What was it like to play with Andre Previn in the Pittsburgh? Well, it was like a dream come true. Now, I played twice for the opening show of Previn and the Pittsburgh, 1977 and 78. Previn and the Pittsburgh. This series, this nationally broadcast television series. 
I think that he might have thought that it would be good to, to showcase this African-American young woman, that it would be good for the orchestra. Jennings would go on to work under two other musical directors, Lauren Mizell and Morris Janssens. But now retired, she's turned much of her attention to another artistic medium, writing, a talent she might well have inherited from her father, P.L. Prattis. He was the editor of the Pittsburgh Courier, and I think that writing and reading have always been important in our family, and I've always been a big letter writer. But not just letters. Jennings also wrote articles for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and from 1988 to 1994, she published a newsletter called Symphonium, which highlighted the accomplishments of African-American musicians. Okay. And this is Paul Ross. Now she can add one more title to her list of accomplishments, that of book author. In 2013, she wrote In One Era and Out the Other, a collection of contemporary essays. I write about what pops into my mind, and I have nothing but admiration for novelists and story writers because I can't make anything up. Everything that I write is, is true. I guess perhaps you might call me a reporter. Like your dad? Maybe so. I definitely feel as if I've got, quote, the writing gene or printer's ink in my veins, which has come out later in life. That's so corny. <laughs> it really is. In her later life, Jennings has more than enough to keep her busy. But now she also has more time to spend with her husband, Charles Johnson. He is the most admirable person I know. We have been married for 30 years. Were it not for him, I don't know where I'd be. I probably would not be sitting here talking to you. Really? He's been such a wonderful support. He's a role model for me. And Jennings has become a role model for other aspiring musicians, although she's too modest to say so. I just look back and think how fortunate I've been that I hope I've done a good job and been an inspiration to some people. All I can hope is that they see me on stage, see me playing, and perhaps aspire to, to do something similar to what I've done.